Uh, sneak in. I'm here. So what did you think of CNO? What do you think I thought of CNO? This course is sabermetrics <laughs> for oral facial pain. This is measured matters. That's exactly what you get out of this course. It's what you learn. You realize that you need numbers, statistics, and proof. And that's what this course provides. So you're glad you came, I can take it. Who wouldn't be? It's an awesome course. That's awesome. Oh, Are you glad you came? I'm so glad I came. Is this a, something a little different? Extremely um, helpful information to okay. help diagnosis. And yeah, right? Isn't that important? Pain. Yeah. So what was CNO 1 like, guys? What'd you think? I cap to you. I, I, I thought it was fantastic as, a, as an endodontist. The first time I saw Nick speak, having done this for 20 years, I just knew that what he was saying is, is true and had to hear more. Uh, it's my toolbox, my instruments, my paradigms, everything has just been expanded tremendously. And I'm, I am so much better for it. And, and I can't thank you enough for giving me these tools to help, help my patients and help my referring doctors. And, and I can't wait to spread the word. I'm from Sydney, Australia. What the hell are you doing flying all the way over here? God knows. <laughs> <laughs> How was the course? It was great. It was great. It was a great demystifier. Yeah. Um, on a topic that really has mystified our profession for a long time. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Yeah. What was what was probably the most important point? Oh, I think just the the sort of the way all the team the the joint stuff was explained yeah. and the and the necessity for measuring matters. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Occlusion, because joints. You know, everything. I don't know if because I heard a couple of days ago, um, you know, just as an example about the importance of measuring things in as much as you know if a doctor takes your blood pressure sure. and says you've got high blood pressure you need meds and then you come back from an evaluation and he got, looks at you and goes you look fine right without yeah. measuring it right. no patient's going to accept that no of course not yeah i just think you have to do it if you're interested in or treat oral facial pain or you want to diagnose folks and, and get them into the proper place you we don't know what we don't know until we measure it and it helps for those cases where you want you need to make sure that it's that it's right well my that. my hat's off to you because you're an endodontist and mm -hmm. you're sitting here trying to not pull the trigger on mm. doing root canals on teeth oh right that's Absol awesome. absolutely absolutely i don't want to do it unless they absolutely need it and now there's a lot a lot more of these cases where i say i'm not sure what's going on but yeah I'm not ready to do a root canal here. It's blown away a little bit of the fog, and, and I know yeah. that if I keep going, it'll become clearer and clearer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. There's a little discal movement, and just right after that, pop. Near, near maximum opening. Look, she doesn't clear on working CEP left. She doesn't clear. Does she clear on balancing? So she doesn't clear at CEP, working or balancing. She doesn't clear at IEP. So what's an anterior guidance determined by? It's determined by the, the eminence, the disc, the condylar head, presence or lack of adhesions, and the shapes of the teeth, and the positions of the teeth. So she doesn't have an anterior guidance, right? But is that all tooth-based, or is that also from the orthopedic end? They skeletal stuff. So if you're looking at teeth, which we're used to doing, and you can quantify that with a T-scan, you can quantify some of the muscle, but you have no idea what the bony parts are doing. <coughs> so how can you make a diagnosis? You can't. Why does this woman not have um, an anterior guidance? And is an anterior guidance appropriate for her? If she's a Piper 3A or better, it is appropriate for her. How do you determine a Piper 3A? You have to image. Wow. Orthodontist on a girl in particular, anterior open bite, they'll close the bite, opens back up. Send them to the oral surgeon. Tom will break the jaws, do the recoupling, relapse. Correct? So I wonder why that is. Now we just say they relapse. I know, that's the diagnosis. <laughs> I know, I get it. And Tom too, but see Tom, Tom's an ethical guy. So he really start. he loves this stuff, right? Because it's, it's kind of outside the box to where he's like starting to explain things that he's seen and never really thought about. It's because he wasn't trained and no one around him is doing it, right? Oral surgeons say 10% relapse on, on a La Forge osteotomy. Probably higher, right? I think it's over 50. Okay, how thick's the disc? About two millimeters. So there's a rule of twos. But it's more than just a two millimeter thick disc. If I have more than two millimeters of anterior uncoupling, 
ding, 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 yellow to red alert, foundation. <coughs> Remember, we're supposed to be experts with teeth, gums, and bites. Mm -hmm. Let's start with bites. I mean, imagine working without x-rays and being a dentist. Now, I can't imagine working without an MRI because I know how important this is to the bite. And you guys get it now too, right? I always do my MRIs in MIP, IEP, and fully translated. Why? Because I'm never treating in CR. There's the D line, the green's at 100%. That was the left excursive movement. Move the C line to the start of the excursion, right about here. See if things start diverging, makes sense, right? So you start getting subtractive on all these other people, you're trying to cure their TMD problems. Sometimes it needs to be additive, and not just on the canine. There's even times, by the way, I'm going to blow your mind a little bit, that we don't want to measure the anterior guidance. Okay, so that's level three stuff. you got to learn how to do this first, and you're going to be able to help a lot of people with this, but you're not going to be able to help all of them. You're going to have to know there are times where it's actually going to be counterproductive. All right, so what taught me that is a lot of experience working with Piper and scans. Okay. It, even though you took the DTR course, the initial one, you have to come here to really get the full picture. I'm going to beg my husband. He's a periodontist. He needs it. He's doing LANAP, and in LANAP, they tell him that they have to whack all the occlusion. Nope. I know. And they can barely touch, and they, they oh my gosh. Nope. They're telling, and he's going at it. Nope. But I wonder if TAL would be a whole lot less hyperactive and flex those teeth less and activate those A-betas less and the PDL less if I reduce that flexure and maybe decrease her sensitivity. Now, I can't promise you that it's going to go away for her. I can tell you that she's a good candidate. And why? Because now I'd ask her, why are you here? So why are you here? So modern doctors are realizing that the joint foundation is no longer the periodontium in the teeth. It is the hinge axis itself, basal bone, alveolar bone, remember all that stuff? This is state of the art.